friends i'm back again well well it seems that turkey has really proven itself to be the strong man in nato because there is definitely a strong man holding nato hostage and it's not putin friends it's erdogan Yesterday I was preparing my notes to publish a message for today so I have those notes with me but obviously during this meeting that took place with NATO, Finland, Sweden, Turkey I've had to make some extra points in my notes. Let's go along with the article here. NATO deal between Turkey, Sweden and Finland brings home wins for Erdogan and a possible F-16 breakthrough. Friends, my goodness. <laughs> Turkey has been in a position where it's been holding NATO hostage, blackmailing NATO into silence of its invasion of Syria, which is what it is, it's an invasion, by using its reluctant stance on Finland and Sweden joining the gang of NATO, gaining concessions, blackmail. Turkey's been opposed to Western NATO values, human rights, democracy, etc. So it's been using its membership to get what it can while it can. Key points. Turkish President was staunch in his demands of Sweden and Finland, which centred on their relationships with groups that Turkey's government deems a terrorist threat. NATO's agreed, basically, to now give weapons to Turkey whenever Turkey sees fit that it needs weapons, to actually support Turkish fight against terrorism. So NATO has actually succumbed to this very clever, cunning strategy that Erdogan's been implementing. What, a, what is a big win for NATO is also a victory for Erdogan, analysts say, and one that the president needed in order to shore up domestic support as his economy flounders and Turks struggle with inflation that exceeded 70%. So this is a huge break breakthrough for him especially at home regards to public opinion nato official officials on tuesday celebrated turkey's lifting of its veto against sweden and finland joining the transatlantic alliance a move that brought the nordic states one step closer to a full nato membership four months after russia launched its invasion of ukraine Turkey's initial opposition came as a major stumbling block and a surprise to many amid growing urgency among Western nations to push back against Russian President Putin. Finland and Sweden took a historic decision to end their non-aligned positions and join the alliance in the face of Russia's aggression, but new countries joining NATO requires unanimous approval from all existing member states. And of course, Turkey was the thorn in the side. Erdogan was staunch in his demands of Sweden and Finland, which centred on their relationships with groups that Turkey's government deems a terrorist threat. What is the big win for NATO is also a victory for Erdogan, analysts say. Right. Win all around, apart from Putin, who is the biggest loser in all of this. Wow. Erdogan's pulled the rug from under Russia, blatantly, right? Because I'm sure Putin was pleased when Erdogan vetoed this decision opposing Finland and Sweden from joining the opposition to expanding NATO. So he just backstabbed his buddy Putin. Let's read on. What else does this say? Timothy Ash, an emerging markets strategist at Blue Bay Asset Management, wrote in a note Wednesday, good decision by the one. He takes some political capital into elections. He negotiated hard right up to the last minute and got real wins with assurances on security issues and likely on more military equipment from the US. Those F-15s, Ash wrote. 
He had his call with Biden and will get his one-on-one -on -one with Biden at Madrid. He comes back in from the cold with the West. Turkey got what it wanted. Russia calls NATO expansion deal destabilizing. Ukraine releases footage of deadly mall strike. The Western military organization and I would add, not defensive, offensive, NATO has officially invited Sweden and Finland to join the alliance in a historic move on Wednesday. The summit, arguably the most important meeting of the alliance in recent months and perhaps years, has also seen the alliance reiterate its condemnation of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, pledge to beef up its defences in Europe and slam China as posing a challenge to its interests. My goodness, you guys. Things are really moving in the direction for the rise of the beast. Russia has issued an initial reaction to the NATO deal that allows its expansion to go ahead, roughly doubling the land border Russia will have to share with NATO members, with one official calling it a purely destabilizing factor. Biden thanks Erdogan for allowing Finland and Sweden to join NATO. Wow, he held NATO hostage and got what he wanted. Now, Iran. Iran says it understands Turkey's need for Syria campaign. There's so much to say. So much is going on, you guys. <clears throat> Let me go to my notes before I go off on dungeon. Turkey is actually working more closely, or has been, with Russia and Iran than with the NATO nations anyway, right? But why is that? Turkey has been showing a lot of interest in the East, in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, in Israel, and not in the West. But it will do what it can to cunningly manipulate the NATO membership it has before it feels confident enough to call the shots. We think Erdogan is calling the shots now. We've seen nothing yet. Turkey is also threatening Greece and Cyprus, but is using its veto button, and has been in NATO, when it came to Finland and Sweden. Some time ago, Russia even said that it understands Turkey's security concerns. Now Iran is saying it also understands Turkey's need for Syria campaign. What's the bigger picture? What do you think is going to happen? What is the end game here? I believe that Turkey wants North Syria expand its borders place the Syrian refugees that are a problem in Turkey in that location, which is going to change the demographics, removing the Christians, the Kurds, the, the Yazidis, and replace the region with Arabs who are pro-Turkey, who will work for Turkey, right? And he likely work with Iran to give southern Syria over to Iran to do with it what he seems fit which will be a direct threat to Israel. Hence, Israel is now under greater threat because now Russia is moving out, being kicked out. Air spaces are being refused. Azerbaijan has refused airspace to Russia. Turkey has refused airspace to Russia. Eventually, this is going to threaten Israel more. Now, seeing as Russia is now losing its influence in the region, Iran will be the dog that Erdogan is going to unleash. So we're seeing the Gog Magog alliance form day by day. You see how the pieces are moving into their position. Although Israel and Turkey can celebrate a victory regarding their thawing of relations and working together economically, the Iranian attack attacks on Israeli citizens on Turkish soil, example, they can celebrate that. But in South Syria, Iran will have an open passage to pressure and attack Israel. Turkey is outsmarting its neighbours. Let's read to some of this. I was reading to you from my notes. Iran's foreign minister 
signaled on Monday that Tehran would not oppose a new proposed Turkish military operation targeting outlawed Turkish Kurdish militants in Syria. We understand Turkey's security concerns for you all. Everyone seems to understand the position that Turkey is facing. The terrorist threat to its national security. The weapons it needs in order to build its military strength. We understand Turkey's security concerns very well. Hossein told reporters after talks in Ankara with his Turkish counterpart. We understand that. Maybe a special operation might be needed, he added. Turkey's security concerns must be tackled fully and permanently. The same thing NATO has been saying now. They understand. So we are arming, strengthening and positioning Turkey to take the lead. In fact, the nations that have been helping Turkey to expand its reach in the region are Russia and Iran and NATO. The Turkish president has warned over the past few weeks that he may soon launch a new offensive in Syria against Tur Kurdish fighters he claims are waging an insurgency against the Turkish state. So this decision in NATO has proven that these leaders, NATO, Finland and Sweden, NATO collectively, are going to support Turkey in Syria because they support now his fight against terrorism. So which is it? The US was opposing Turkey's military operations in Syria, but on this side in NATO, they've just blatantly said they're pleased with the outcome of NATO. They gave in to him holding them hostage. So now Iran is gonna agree with Turkey to work together in Syria. We're getting closer, you guys, to the times of the end when the beast is finally going to rear its ugly head with the Ten Nation Coalition. Russia is going to keep Europe busy and this situation, I think, is going to escalate terribly, disastrously. It's going to keep Europe busy in war. US-led NATO will confirm or claim war with Russia is due to it protecting Western values and keeping US also busy. But on the horizon, we've now got US versus the conflict coming up with China, which is also going to keep the West busy. Meanwhile, Abraham Accords, this sense of force, peace and safety will continue while the beast is going to form and take the world by surprise. It seems that we are heading into a season of the East versus the West. Ironically, the West has been supporting the rise of the beast. An article here that I think is very, very telling, very prophetic, in fact. I'll read some of it to you. Biden, Middle East visit. While the Arab world needs a new leadership, calling for the rise of the Antichrist. That's what this article says to me. As the American president promises a new dawn with a new ruler of Saudi Arabia, MBS, what Arabs need is a leader who can stand up to Israel and unite a people battered by Western hegemony, calling for the rise of the Mahdi, the Antichrist. If you think about it, now is a good time for a young, ambitious Arab leader to emerge. This article is so telling and I'm going to attach it in the link for your further reading. I have so much more to share, friends. Recently, also, water ministers of Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Pakistan discuss water stress in region. Conflicts in this region are going to be over natural resources. I keep saying that as a broken record because that's what it's going to come down to. But the thing that brings these nations together is Jerusalem. Cairo, earlier this month, Egyptian water minister met with his Syrian, Iraqi, Pakistani counterparts respectively to discuss the water reality on Wednesday. The meeting was held on the sidelines of the second high-level international conference on the International Decade for Action, Water for Sustainable Development. 
2018 to 2028. The meeting also tackled the Turkish me measures regarding the construction of dams on the banks of the Tigris-Euphrates rivers, which caused water stress in the downstream countries of Iraq and Syria. What does the scripture tell us about the river Euphrates? It has a lot that it tells us. In Revelation chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 16. There's a lot more that I want to share about that. I'm going to save that for my um, upcoming message. I'm doing these in, in bite sizes. So when I get to the Bible study, we can now have a better foundation, a bit more of a perspective before we delve into the scriptures. The scriptures are so important for us to understand and to familiarize ourselves with, friends, because the times of the end are going to look very, very confusing for many people. So we need to be aware of what the word tells us, right? Agreed? The Syrian regime and Iraq have accused Turkey of depriving the Syrians and Iraqis of their watersheds off the Euphrates River. The ebbing of the Euphrates in Iraq has helped unearth an archaeological city that dates back to the Mitanni Empire, just for interest's sake. Another piece of news I want to share with you, I'll have to do it in another video, separate message is regarding Greece. <clears throat> Greece to triple length of border fence with Turkey is preparing for a conflict, friends. Now, let's take a look at this image. This person, the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, the Antichrist is slowly but surely forming. We are at this stage here now. The legs of iron, I believe, have been around since the inception of the Islamic Khilafa. The stage that we are at is at the toes, the feet. The final ten that being formed is yet remains to be seen. But I think it's not that far off, friends. There will be a lot of conflict before that time comes, but surely it's happening. We have to do our best to keep on top of the news as it happens so we can understand the dynamics that are at play. This region here, friends, is where the beast is going to arise. Let's go to real-time map. It's a vast region. It's north of Israel. The beast, the Antichrist, comes north of Israel, while the harlot and the daughters of the harlot are south of Israel. With nations, Israel is working with nations that are Arab today who are willing to work together with Israel and I just mentioned that in my last message now we're going back to this Turkish and NATO news I'm going to share with you a clip from TRT just to end this video and I will be back again soon I still have that message I want to share with you regarding that wonderful nugget that the Lord gave me from the book of Nehemiah and I'm also going to continue on with these prophetic updates, especially regarding Turkey and NATO, Syria, Iraq, Israel, and also Greece. So I'll be back again soon. Please keep me in your prayers as I continue to um, keep on top of the news as much as I can while my sister is visiting. Also, please remember to pray for her. Thank you so much. And I'll be uh, seeing you again soon, friends. Just as the NATO summit was getting underway, the last round of talks brought a breakthrough. The leaders of Turkey, Finland and Sweden and their foreign ministers had one last push, which means Finland and Sweden will be formally asked to join NATO at this week's summit. And I'm pleased to announce that we now have an agreement that paves the way for Finland and Sweden to join NATO. Turkey, Finland and Sweden have uh, signed a memorandum that addresses Turkey's concerns, including around arms exports and the fight against terrorism. An initial meeting between the leaders lasted two hours and then broke up, only for the media to be then told it wasn't over. It resulted in a joint memorandum 
which included several points of cooperation. Sweden and Finland agreed to extend their full support to Turkey against threats to its national security. This includes the PKK YPG and the terror group known as FETO. Finland and Sweden will address Turkey's pending deportation or extradition requests of terror suspects expeditiously and thoroughly in accordance with the European Convention on Extradition and work on bilateral extradition deals. The parties also confirm that there are no national arms embargoes in place between them. The day started off with the Turkish president leaving the capital Ankara, expressing reservations about the possibility of a deal. We emphasize our expectation since the beginning that the PKK, which threatens Turkey's national interests and all its extensions, especially the PYD and YPG, should be prevented from acting freely in these countries. We will once again explain our rightful stance during the summit. It seems as though the Turkish government has got most of what it was asking for, and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg believes the deal is strong enough for everyone to stick to. Membership of NATO isn't an instantaneous event. Once Finland and Sweden have been invited to join, there'll be more talks and all 30 members will have to ratify their membership. But at least everyone here hopes that from now on, the process will be a lot smoother. Andrew Hopkins, TRT World, Madrid.